In 1876, in a little village where the Appalachian Mountains run through Canada, just south of Quebec City, a farmer named Joseph Fechtow was cutting hay and took a break to pick and eat some blueberries. As he did so, he noticed a greenish rock on the ground that didn't look like other rocks he'd seen. It had little hairs growing out of it. Fechtow scraped some of the fibers out with his fingernail and brought it back into town. He showed the strange rock fibers to a fur trader named Roger Ward who was passing through. Ward took some of the fibers to have them analyzed, and they discovered that the greenish rock was asbestos. And that little discovery may have been one of the most important inciting events of the American Industrial Revolution. So the fur trader Roger Ward was an enterprising guy who understood business. He was a fur trader after all. And when he discovered that the green rock Joe Fechtow found was asbestos, did he tell Joe the good news? Nope. Ward bought the land and the mining rights around the village. He licensed those rights, and two years later, an asbestos mine was opened by some investors known as the Johnson Brothers. We found Joseph Fechtow in the Canadian census, and I was trying to see if Roger Ward or the Johnson Brothers got him a fruit basket or anything else to thank him for his part in discovering the Thetford Mines. We didn't find one. But it turns out that Ward actually claimed he had discovered the asbestos, as was written in the Canadian Geological Report in 1888. This dense and challenging land had originally been the hunting and fishing grounds of the Algonquin First Peoples known as the Abenaki. Thetford had actually been created as a reserve for the Abenaki, but the British wanted to bring English immigrants to counter the French to the north and the Americans to the south, so the Abenaki were largely displaced. When the area was first surveyed by the government in 1848, they noted that the serpentine rock was beautiful, but contaminated by useless asbestos. The value of asbestos in a mineral wasn't fully understood by the industrializing world, so they thought it was worthless. By the time Fechtow discovered it in the 1870s, however, asbestos was being revitalized as an industrial material thanks to the steam revolution. Roger Ward began mining asbestos to be brought to Quebec City, when the railroads reached the area in 1879, the area quickly grew and more mines were discovered. Sometimes whole neighborhoods needed to be moved to make way. People came to Quebec City to work for the mines, but the area grew so much that Thetford Mines was incorporated as its own city. At the time, Thetford was considered to be the largest asbestos mine in the world and gave rise to the area becoming known as the Asbestos Belt, the source of much of the world's asbestos. The mine was mostly filled with chrysotile, which is the most commonly used type of asbestos in industry. Asbestos, of course, is highly resistant to heat and flame and chemicals, and it was used for everything from insulation to drywall to cement to floor tiles to roofing. At one point, practically every inch of U.S. naval ships were insulated with asbestos as well. During the 20th century, Thetford was one of the world's largest asbestos mines. Millions of products and building materials came from that mine. As the dangers of asbestos became more widely known to the public, demand reduced. Asbestos fibers can cause all kinds of breathing diseases, including cancers like mesothelioma. So in 2012, Canada closed the mine and filled it with turquoise water. In 2018, Canada finally banned the sale and use of asbestos and all asbestos products. But asbestos was mixed with other building materials like cement and vinyl, and it was used for insulation of all kinds, so it pays to be careful when renovating or demolishing any home or building constructed before the 1980s. Asbestos mined from this Thetford mine in Quebec, at the time the largest asbestos mine on earth, is still in buildings and products all around the world today. That's it for another segment of our asbestos revolution. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if there's anything about asbestos that you're curious about or would like to see us cover in the future, post your ideas and questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching Asbestos Rewind.